What's up YouTube and finally welcome to your first person shooter multiplayer tutorial this first multi multiplayer tutorial I'm doing and uh, unlike much others I've seen on YouTube um, I won't have you like scripting a long complicated script that handles uh, all the networking at first and then uh, do the players and all the rest I'm gonna just start off from the simple stuff and as we go along I'll explain uh, what each script does and why I'm typing what I'm typing. So let's get started. I'm just going to open Unity. And create a new project. Um, I will create a new project for this um, for this tutorial, e tutorial even though I've done a previous uh, first person shooter project. But I can later show you how to incorporate this multiplayer project into your uh, first person shooter project if you followed my other tutorial so for now just create a new project with me even if you're gonna incorporate it into the other FPS now I'm gonna put it in my work folder as always uh, new folder um, online FPS select folder and you don't need any packages right now because we have no use for any of them right now. Maybe we'll later, but I'm not sure it will at all. So, all right, let's get started first by creating our scene. Then we'll create a simple move script and stat script that will work offline. We will later make them work online. Don't worry, but first we need to get a player going. So, you know how it goes. Um, reset the position. Always um, start from the center. Always have your world in the center because it's much easier to handle positions that way. Um, and some scripts may even require that. So just you know, for good uh, practice, always start your project from the center of the world, from zero zero zero. And this is my floor cube, so I'm gonna call it floor. No, I'm even gonna capitalize that F. Um just so you know it looks like it's all in one project anyway now that I've got um, camera floor oh wait um, I'm gonna scale it on the x-axis by 50 and the z-axis by 50 just make a small arena you know then we need the light point light <clears throat> now we also want to center that point light we want to light all over the floor then scale its range to a hundred and move it on the Y by thirty. So you got a nice aesthetic environment. Now we may even want to put a few cubes lying around, you know, just so we know when we turn that we know that we're turning correctly and everything's working. So we'll put it Y zero. No, Y one. Yeah, that's exact. So you know it's exactly above the surface. Right. Now I'm gonna. It's kind of hard to see. I'm just gonna put them around because we're gonna look around. So I'm just gonna put them like this. Around the center. And then duplicate. Put one here. One here. Duplicate. And one here. Right. So this is like a nice little test environment. Now. Oh, wait. Oops, I just click Control S automatically. <laughs> Alright, anyways, so now uh, save. Call this just um, test, because this is just the test area, it's not the actual level. And create a new capsule. This will be our player. Now, unlike much more, uh, much like a lot of games and much other tutorials and my previous tutorial. I'm not going to use a character controller to control our player. Let's just name him player before we start the game. And if we're at, while we're at it, let's just tag in player. Oops. All right. And so, unlike uh, other tutorials, like I said, we're not going to use the character controller. We're going to use the rigid body, right? Simply because I think it's like it, it responds to physics a lot more and everything, and I think it's much more dynamic and better but it's kinda difficult it's more difficult to work with so uh... don't worry i'll uh... i'll provide the scripts for you 
So now first thing we want to get going is a movement script. So I found this uh because I'm also new to uh character controllers using rigid bodies. I'm uh very new to that. So I found this script online. It's called Rigid Body FPS Controller. So you can just copy that. All right? Then create new JavaScript. And since we don't have AIs because this is a multiplayer game, if you guys want AIs in the multiplayer, we can do that. But for now, we're not going to have any AIs. So we, it's very easy to name the script. So we're just going to call this controller because this is the script through which we control the player. So we're going to call this con controller. Okay. Now, unlike other FPSs, I'm not going to have a mouse look. I'm actually going to have it kind of a Doom style that um you move back and forth with w and s and you rotate the player on the horizontal axis like this well let me show you you rotate the player like this with w and d and then you move forward and backward with the uh, w and s and the reason i'm doing that is um well i want to make it a bit more special than all the other fps's i don't want it to be just another generic one even though that's kind of the <coughs> the point of the tutorial um, but also, you know, when you think about it, when you're like on an airplane or something and you're with your laptop and you just want to play a first person shooter, but you can't because the laptop's mouse is just shit, you know, that little thing. So I think it's better to make a first person shooter using only the keyboard. So <clears throat> in this tutorial, I'm going to make a first person shooter using only the keyboard. If you want, you can, um, you can, uh, put the mouse uh, you can like do a mouse look and use the FPS script as it is. I'm just gonna alter it a bit so it will uh, it will you know be like I want it to be. But if you want a regular first person shooter controller, then get a mouse look script. You know, do that and uh, and just leave the script as it is. So for those of you who want um, the Doom style controlling, just copy paste and first of all save. Now first thing we need to do is remove this and replace this with a zero this is actually um the what's uh this is actually like the move direction right you can see this is much like the character controller just we have much more parameters because rigid body usually falls if you're not moving it because you know it's a capsule it's not stable so they're doing a couple tricks here so first of all, this is the controlling. This is where the actual like input comes in. Uh we add we don't yeah, we add to the to our position this position, to the rigid body's position, this position. So um we're gonna remove the horizontal movement, so we're gonna move the movement on the x axis and we're only gonna leave the vertical movement which is on the z axis, right? So now we want to add a new line, not here, but up here. Whoops. Excuse me, up here. All right? We're just going to type transform dot rotate zero, and then here we put our horizontal axis. And, then, and this. All right this is rotating it by the input now if you're just gonna rotate it by uh... you know one and negative one then it's gonna be really slow so we're gonna just make a sensitivity variable so we can like adjust the speed of it uh... var i don't really know how to type sensitivity so i'm just gonna go with my instincts Sense sensitivity and make sure either type cast that to float or type uh, like the number you want point zero or point something otherwise it will make it an int okay so uh... now we just times that by sen sit right sen how do I tell I'm just gonna copy this like that sensitivity and if you want to make it smooth you can even times that by time dot all the time, which is something I really like about this type of controlling that you can smooth it however way you want, and that's kind of limited in the mouse look script because unless you know like really good scripting 
or really good mathematics in uh, what you call it, um, geometry, then you won't be able to smooth down like the mouse hook script. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, laggy if you can see. Not laggy, well it kind of sticks. Anyway, so this line rotate, rotates our player according to input. <coughs> now, uh, all that's left to do, I think, is to test. Yeah, we got jumping. See, this script comes with everything. All right, so take a controller script, go to the player, take a controller script, and add it right there. Now I'm going to make, yeah, sensitivity 5. Oh, one last thing I forgot to do the camera. Simply put it inside the player object, reset position. For those of you who watched a previous tutorial, this tutorial should be pretty easy for you. You should know a lot of this stuff because I've done it already in the other tutorial. But if it, this is new to you, I just uh, you can just follow along. All right, so our rotation is really slow right now because we tan we smoothed it with time out delta time. So I'm just gonna pump it up to like 20. Ah, still a bit slow. Let's go with 50. That's better, but I want even faster. Yep, we're doing 360 pretty good. And if you can see, um, because we placed this transform.rotate out of the if grounded, so this is checking if the player is hitting the floor. And then do everything if the player is hitting the floor. And we want to rotate even when the player is not hitting the floor, so that's why you put it outside of this if, if uh, clause right and if you press space you can jump and you can control it with the WSD keys and no mouse needed the only this the only um like uh disability of this controller is that you can't aim upwards but i think i can live with that if you want you can put a mouse hook on it i'm just going to leave it like this you know the player controller is pretty easy to make so you can do your player controller it doesn't really matter i'll show you in the next tutorial how to network uh, make it network compatible. Now anyways, uh, let's see how much time I have. Well, already 12 minutes. Alright, so before we end this tutorial, I just want to make a quick stat script. It's The stat script is also not going to be you know, network compatible right now, because first we're just going to get it down. So, create JavaScript stats. Open it. We're gonna make this fairly simple, just a health system and a regeneration system. So, um, call this. Whoops. What does it want now? Anyway, so I'm just gonna do it really fast. So, I take up less time. All right. So, start. Um, max health equals 100.0. Var health equals max health. Right now, private var timer equals 0, 0.0. Right now, function update just like that. This like that. All right. Now here, first of all, I want to check if the player is died. So if health is less than or equal to zero, then die. And uh, this is not an undefined function, so we're just going to define it real quick. And we're not going to put anything in it. This is going to be empty right now because we will make a respawn system once we get the network going. So um, moving on, uh, we need to make the regeneration system. So first, let's add two parameters. Because this is your game, I want you to be able to customize it to the max. So, hold on, let me just pause this for a quick sec. Okay, sorry, just had to do something real quick. So, because we want to make it um, completely customizable to you, I'm just going to add two variables. One, var, regen, sort for regeneration. Uh, regeneration um, time, I guess. Set it to um, four seconds. Make sure it's a point zero so we know it's a float. And another regeneration speed at that to 1.0 all right now here first I want to check if we need to regenerate so health is less than max health open brackets 
and here if timer is less than region time excuse me well what's going on All right open brackets timer plus equals 0 0.01 okay actually you know what 0 0.1 else uh, by the way this 0 0.01 and 0 0.1 is a big difference between um, how how much you know how uh, how how fast the timer goes right so it's like basically a countdown so this is how fast the countdown goes if you make it zero it's longer if you make it point one it's shorter that's just how it goes right now else we wanna add to the health by the region speed so health plus equals region speed and now because the regenerate speed is one and we don't want to add it one each frame because that would just heal so quick we want to divide it by ten so it's gonna add um, one point zero divided by ten each frame which is what zero point one easy math right now else we want to res reset the timer so we can regenerate again so reset it back to zero point zero if we're not regenerating if the it's regenerated all the way up so that's our quick uh, regeneration system. Let's give it a quick test run. Okay. Um, player. Add the stats script. All right, we're good to go. Now keep your eyes on the inspector here. Right. See if I change the health back to one. Right. That uh, didn't get a lot of timer. So let's turn it back to what? Let's turn it back to 100. Right. So let's make the region timer 10. And then regions, regeneration speed, we're going to make it 2. So now let's make health 1. See, so we'll count and then start. Now, if you want to, if you even want to make it more time, you can just add more time and it will take it more time to start. See, counting down. And you can even buff up the regeneration speed. Now it's regenerating a lot more. And, uh, well, you get the idea. Now you see that it went to 100.2 at second. We need to fix that. So the quick fix is no problem. Just type right here if health is bigger than max, on, max health. Max health. Yeah, I took that correctly. Then simply do health equals max health. All right, <clears throat> and that's it for this tutorial. Um, everything works fine till now. Uh, next tutorial we'll do the guns, then we'll do the customization, and then we'll do the networking. So we're gonna have like a sort of a COD-like cross between Call of Duty and Doom multiplayer game. So uh, keep uh, tuning in and bye-bye.